The devotion today is titled, The Death of Herod. And I'd like to use an extra biblical source to help us understand who this character is and also the circumstances of his death. Now, as you read through the Bible, you'll find Herod mentioned here, Herod mentioned there, and they're not all the same Herod. So this Herod is known as Herod Agrippa I. Josephus tells us that Herod Agrippa I was a penniless grandson of Herod the Great before he came into power. His benefactor was one of his uncles, Herod Antipas. Now, Herod Antipas was called by Jesus that fox when he was told that Herod was trying to kill him. And also Jesus refused to speak to him when he was questioned by him. Well, that fox was outfoxed by his nephew. Agrippa's conniving in Rome with various Caesars uh, led to the exile of Herod Antipas and Agrippa being promoted to take over the kingship of Antipas as well as rule all the former territory of his grandfather, Herod the Great. Now, this happened about three years prior to our story here today. And during our story here today, the great famine that was predicted by Agabus in chapter of Acts chapter 11, verses 27 and 28, is ongoing. And he said, uh, And one of them named Agabus stood up and foretold by the Spirit that there would be a great famine over all the world. This took place in the days of Claudius. So let's begin our story. Now Herod was angry with the people of Tyre and Sidon, and they came to him with one accord, and having persuaded Blastus, the king's chamberlain, they asked for peace, because their country depended on the king's country for food. So I think we understand why they needed food, because there was a famine going on. Also, Tyre and Sidon sound kind of familiar. These are the remnant cities of what was an ancient empire that predated not only the Romans, not only the Greeks, but also the Israelites before they came into the Promised Land. So there might be some ancient animosity there between the Tyranians and the Sidonians and Agrippa. We don't know, but it wouldn't have taken much to get on the bad side of Agrippa. So Blastus has set up a two-day ceremony. The first day of the ceremony was to honor Caesar uh, in Rome, Claudius. And now the appointed day, <clears throat> verse 21. On an appointed day, Herod put on his royal robes, took his seat upon the throne, and delivered an oration to them. Let me stop for a second there. According to Josephus, the royal robe was made of silver, and when the sun's rays reflected off of it, it was very stunning. When the crowd saw that, they were stunned into silence. As Herod was speaking, he says a voice here and a voice there rose up, and pretty soon the whole crowd was yelling, it's a God, not a man. And what happens in verse 23? Immediately an angel of the Lord struck him down because he did not give God the glory, and he was eaten by worms and breathed his last. Josephus confirms this, saying it was a horrible death, and he lingered for five days before finally perishing. Verse 24, but the word of God increased and multiplied. And then verse 25, and Barnabas and Saul returned from Jerusalem when they had completed their service, bringing with them John, whose other name was Mark. So we have three takeaways from this story. First off is that God will use persecution to grow and strengthen the church. We've seen that before, we've seen it in this story, and we'll probably see it again, maybe even in our lifetimes. The second one is that God is a jealous God, and he delights in humiliating the proud and destroying the source of their pride. And our third takeaway is that those of us who are mature Christians or been in the faith longer than others would be wise to take those younger Christians under our wing and mentor them because we may not be here until Jesus comes. So the race must be run and the gospel preached. Thanks for watching.